everyone, I'm John from FI Singapore. And uh, what we're going to go through today, give me a second. Uh. Yeah, so first on the agenda, right, uh, is F5 application services. Then after that, uh, we'll carry on with uh, the other stuff. It'll take about half an hour, yeah, depending on how many questions you all have. Okay, so I, my day job, I take care of central government, uh, I'm a solution engineer for central government in Singapore. So because I don't have to travel as much as in the past, I got more time to play with cool stuff like Ansible, right? So this demo, Basically, uh, I'll show you at the end, right, what exactly is going to do. So I'm going to cover a few slides to give you some context into um, what's going on. So first off, right, who can tell me which city this is? You need to speak up a bit, man. I know every city looks about the same, right, when it's a night shot. Something. Sorry? It's a mashup or something, I think. No, it's not a mashup. It's a real city. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real... <laughs> no, no, no. I mean... Uh, Oh, uh, is that Hong Kong? From the Hong Kong? Okay, I got one Hong Kong. Can I have a bit more, uh, more variety? Shanghai. It's not very near Hong Kong. Shanghai, uh, good try, yes. Bangkok? No. Bangkok, you have the Chao Paya. I don't, oh. I don't quite see the Chao Paya here. Okay, okay. I see a big uh, body of water. Seattle? Huh? Seattle? Seattle? Did I say here Seattle? Mm. It is. Okay, yes, this is a day shot, right? Yeah. And who can recognize this? Taipei. Taipei? Pike Place. Ah, Pike Place, excellent. Oh, Pike Place is somewhere. <laughs> hey, where's Pike Place? Uh? Here, right? <laughs> ah, okay, so this is Seattle, right? You know what Seattle is famous for? F5, of course. F5 is there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and our office is somewhere here, right? It's, it's, not, it's not in the photo, right? Obviously, okay, it's also famous for other lesser known companies like Starbucks, Microsoft, <laughs> AWS, right? <laughs> yeah, but S5 is big there, man. We have this huge, awesome waterfront uh, property, right? And however, because times are changing, we've been there for like 10, 15 years, right? Since the dot com boom and bust, we've been in the same building. Waterfront about three stories high, yeah, and um, very nice low rise, but we're moving into a new place, right? Do you see the second tallest building in this skyline? And it looks super modern too. The one with the sloping edge. Yes. Yeah, very good, right? This one, right? Yes, exactly, right? This is our new um, office. We haven't moved in yet. It's, gonna be, it's still undergoing renovation, right? So it's changing um, the Seattle skyline, uh, so-called. and. Why it appeared in the news, right, is because all other properties have been snapped up by Amazon. We are very lucky to snap up this. <laughs> it's very hard to get real estate in Seattle, believe it or not. It's really crammed out with all the mega giants. Even Expedia is moving the HQ into Seattle, right? And F5 Tower, right, underscores our commitment, right? And the demo later is on Ansible Tower. So Red Hat has Ansible Tower, F5 has F5 Tower, right? Okay, so the demo I'm going to show in a little while. And of course, feel free to visit our HQ, right? Especially those of our customers. We have an awesome demo center over there. Okay, so what I'm going to help you understand, because most people, I meet a lot of customers day in, day out. They, they, um, they just know F5 as a very good load balancer. Yeah, maybe a little bit expensive also. Good and expensive load balancer, right? And that is not quite the full picture. Right? So to understand it in a simple way, you can deploy your applications anywhere you want, right? Um, any cloud, any SDN, on-premise, whatever you prefer, right? And where F5 plays is in the layer 4 to 7 services that writes on top of this. For example, you choose Cisco ACI as your SDN layer. On top of that, you still need things like, okay, of course, our good old load balancing, right? You need DDoS protection from layer 3 to layer 7. You need WAF. Right? For the government, IM8 mandates that all public-facing websites need a web application firewall. Right? Because developers sometimes uh, introduce uh, vulnerabilities when they release new versions. That's inevitable. Right? So you need some layer 7 protection, even identity access. So all these solutions, I won't be going over them today because that's not the focus. Right? But understand 
F5 provides application services from layer 4 to 7. It's not a layer 4 load balancer. Well, it's not just a layer 4 load balancer. Right? So just bear that in mind as we move forward. So Big IP is F5's classic product, right? Whether you deploy it on as a hardware, as you can see behind in that dark room over there, <laughs> we have lots of rather old models. <laughs> but today, right, what I'm using my demo is actually a virtual edition. Right? And I deployed it onto AWS. And this is, can be done in actually two or three clicks. Right? We use something called CloudFormation templates, for those of you familiar with AWS. Yeah? So how does this um, tie in with what Ansible does? Is that we have, like Nick mentioned earlier, we have a, a robust set of modules that are provided out of the box with any standard Ansible uh, installation. Right? And on top of that, we have a, a large group of committed people, even full-time employees, working on enhancing these modules. Right? So these modules, they can do, they, we can classify them into two, uh, a few categories. Right? There are the day zero modules, those that do onboarding. You will define your, uh, all your standard stuff that uh, you get when you deploy a new box, a new uh, F5 application service uh, box, right? More day zero stuff, right? Your route domains, your self IP, your VLANs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't have to worry about such things as an application person, right? Actually, I didn't know what they were before I joined F5. So, okay. But what you need to know, is this starting to get more on the application part? You need to. Um, you know you need security for your um, application. You want to deploy uh, a WAF in front, right? And you want to do it painlessly. You don't want to have to call networking folks and they refer you to security folks and it takes one month. By then, you may have been hacked, yeah? So that's um, part of the ongoing day one application uh, services that you need, right? And when you deploy new apps, F5 has something called iApps iApps are F5's equivalent of CloudFormation templates. Right? They give you a very simple interface with minimal inputs to just um, deploy all the F5 objects that you don't even care about in an optimized best practice, best practice way. Okay. And I will, and actually Tower has a similar feature and I'm going to show you, I mean Ansible Tower, not F5 Tower. Okay, so these are some of the modules that are available. Those of you who have worked with uh, the F5 and civil modules, I'm sure you have used a few of them. Okay. Today we have about 38 right, in, uh, that come out of the box. And if you want additional features, uh, they are, they are pre-released. They are in GitHub. Yeah? We have a GitHub rep repository. Okay, so this is my last slide. The demo looks is something like that, right? So I'm here, then we go to the internet. Um, we deploy on everything, I deploy everything on AWS, okay? So I already have Ansible Tower sitting here, and like Nick mentioned earlier, Ansible Tower is like a GUI front end to Ansible Engine. So how many of you have, here have used Ansible Engine? I think a fair number, right? Some of you are shy. <laughs> but um, I also used Ansible Engine for a little while, like a couple of months, on and off. But Tower, I'm really new, right? I installed it two weeks ago because I never really understood uh, what it would bring, uh, bring to the table for me, right? And because I had to do this demo, then I went and installed it and play around with it. So I'll, I'll share with you as frankly as possible um, where I think its strong points are and where I think it fits in with uh, CICD toolchain. Okay, along the way, yeah. But okay, let me explain this first. Huh? Ansible Tower uh, basically will talk to two infrastructure components, which one is AWS, one is uh, Big IP, FI's Big IP, a virtual edition, also running AWS. Okay, so basically it will fire the modules and commands to bring up all this together combined, right? Big IP and AWS, your entire application is stood up in a matter of minutes, just using a couple of playbooks. And this, of course, can be replicated across multiple clouds. Right? You can deploy on AWS, you can deploy on-premise, you can burst anywhere you want. That's true, the true multi-cloud story, right? Okay. And Slack down here, right? Um, I couldn't quite get the tower Slack notifications to work. Maybe <laughs> um, I'll look more into it later. But I, I cheated. Uh, I got um, 
I basically fired my Slack notifications through AWS using some cheapo Lambda function. <laughs> so what's a Hackazon? Oh, Hackazon is a free, um, I mean, it's an open source uh, vulnerable website. I think Rapid7 uh, put it out okay. yeah, for a few years. So it's, it's representative of a very, um, a group of developers who are totally uh, not security conscious, right? And they just push out whatever crap they want, and then you end up with something like Hackazon. Yeah? Okay, so let's take a look at how it goes. Yeah, let's automate everything. Ah, okay, give me a second. Any questions? Okay, so Tower looks like that, right? I believe at uh, the last meetup, those of you who are there, you should have seen Tower. So Tower has an open source version called AWX. Um, I'm not sure what it stands for. Ansible Works Extensions, maybe? Yeah. Uh, Ansible but, Works, just Ansible Works. Oh, okay, Ansible Works, right? So that's the open source version. Uh, you can try to install it. I think the package is slightly different. This is the license version. So you can get the free 30-day license to try on 10 uh, nodes, which is more than enough for just experimentation, right? So my takeaway, right, of using Ansible Tower is that it excels greatly in credential management. Like for those of you who have used Ansible Engine, how do you handle your credentials? Vault. Vault, uh, okay, Vault. I totally agree. I use that too. Ansible Vault or HashiCorp Vault? Ah, okay, yeah. true. I haven't used HashiCorp Vault. I heard good things about it. Um, anything else? Anyone? Maybe some people, if you're just hacking together, you just hard code it on the command line, right? Using extra variables. Uh, dash E, whatever. Okay, but Vault, it has this challenge, right? You put, you put all your credentials inside, or you have multiple vaults for different credentials. Each of them needs a password. Who's brave enough to upload your, your encrypted vault file to GitHub? Some people do that, no? Yeah. Right. And then they think it's protected by their measly password. <laughs> but it's challenging to share what I'm saying, credentials when you're using Ansible Engine. So as a singular user, you don't quite see the value of Ansible Tower. Ansible Tower is very strong in our back control. Who can access which inventory item, right? It also can auto-discover inventory from EC2 uh, different cloud environments, just like I'll show you F5 also can do that in a very cool way, right? And it's also very strong in uh, the audit trails. Like when, after you run a command, right, you've got to go and put your up button many times and see what you ran in the past, right? Or you go your history. That is painful, man, to say the least, right? In Ansible, if you look down here, you can see I started working on this sometime around January, right? You know, long weekend, and I, I just uh, worked on some code. Then I, I, I got a bit desperate here, right? So you can see I, I did a lot of work here. <laughs> yeah, and then th these are those that failed and uh, those that are successful. It's an overarching view of what's going on. Nice for one person, but I think very valuable for a sizable team, all right? And the, the cool stuff, let me show you a bit of the, cool, the stuff that I think is cool. Hey, okay. what happened? Give me a second. <laughs> okay, so credentials, right? Like you can see, I put a lot of credentials into, uh, into Tower. And then when you go in, right? Say you go into any of them. You can look into it, right? You can see my access key. But even, I'm the one who put it in, no? I'm admin user now. And I cannot access the, the password or the uh, secret key anymore. This applies for all of the credentials. I think this is a very well thought out uh, design. Because I'm also very worried, you know, if I share my admin credentials with someone else, then they're going to copy the key, and then they're going to spin up many things in AWS. Okay, cost, cost on public cloud is becoming a big concern nowadays. You can get very scary bills that your boss asks you to pay. No, not fun. Okay, so um, basically you, you have, you can, uh, each credential, you can assign permissions, who can use it, stuff like that, okay? And at the end of the day, you create, um, 
something called job templates. Job templates, you can think of them as a workbook. Because what I did is you, you, can, you can copy your files into Tower, but that's very troublesome, like the SCP and all that. So what I did is I created a project. So a project is where all your files are uploaded, right? Um, then I pull, I pull everything from GitHub, right? This is what, I mean, today we're talking about infrastructure as code, and this is partially how you do it, right? You put all your playbooks into GitHub, and then you pull it into Ansible Hub. Then based on these, I created uh, job templates, which are uh, mapped to playbooks. And on top of that, I created uh, workflows. So I'm going to push uh, my workflow config. So now you've got to trust me on this, right? My EC2 is almost empty. My big IP is also empty. Yeah, OK. So I'll push, uh, I'll start running this config. And of course, it's, it's visual. Uh, you don't have to go and um, on, on Ansible engine, everything just scrolls by on your screen. Uh. And now I've learned to run everything in verbose mode <laughs> because when you're developing in Ansible, uh, Ansible without verbose mode, you never know what's gone wrong. Yeah? See, so you can see here that I'm running two playbooks, right? One after another based on uh, the first one has to succeed before it goes to the second one. I can take a quick look, right? This already has completed yeah, to create them from an AMI image. So that should finish very soon. Okay. So I think more or less, uh, let me take a look. <coughs> okay, so it's, it's kind of finished already. So now, uh, let me close this, close this, close this. Close this. Ah, okay. Okay, so now I, I, yeah, from no infrastructure, no nothing, now the app is uh, live, right? Accessible to the outside world. Of course, I set up security groups, so if you try to access, you won't be able to. Yeah? Okay, so now take the scenario that the app team, uh, <laughs> the app team uh, has deployed their first instance, right? You have to do some security testing before you, you, go, you actually uh, go live and uh, tell people, hey, you know, I've got great things to sell. You can see brown Indian crest shampoo, whatever that is. Right. So basic uh, sanity, you got to do your security checks. Yeah, let's see whether you can inject something. Uh, script. Oh, okay. So you can see down here that that this this website is seriously um, not set up very well from a security perspective, right? Any there, there are thousand and one holes. This is just an example of one of the many many holes that HackerZone has. Okay, this is an unblemished, uh, poorly written uh, e-commerce site. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, right? I'm going to deploy. So I'm going to make it secure, right? Pretty much uh, instantaneously. So now I run this playbook that basically puts, because now everything is flowing through uh, big IP. It's doing uh, layer seven load balancing, uh, right? Across to one node. Okay, it's not load balancing. It's just sending it to one node. Yeah, and now I'm putting on WAF security. Okay, you can watch it flow through, it's successful. Now let's go back to the site. 
Ah, okay, it blocks me straight away, right? Um, okay, so now I can assess. Uh, I'll explain that uh, in a little while. Okay, so now I assess the same site, yeah, the same uh, backend IP, right? This is a private IP in my VPC. Okay, and now let me try to do the same hack. Yeah, type a bit less. Okay, so it shows I'm rejected, right? Same message. Of course, the message needs to be customized to make it better, but that's not the purpose of this demo here. I just want to show you, right? Now we go into big IP. Okay, you can see down here, right? Uh, we did some pretty cool auto discovery. I'll show you when I uh, in the next part of the demo. But now let's just take a look at the request that came in. Okay, so just now if you look at six thirty, eh? how come it's six thirty? Ah, okay. Look at seven forty three, right? Uh, th these are the two block. Just now you saw it block twice, right? So the first block explains here host. Host header contain IP address. I'm trying to connect to the application through IP address. Normal users never do that, right? <laughs> no one's going to know your IP address. So if they do it, they're probably up to something fishy. That's why we block them. Of course, if you if you disagree, you can turn off this yeah. rule, right? We have standard best practices built into our web application firewall. Second one is pretty standard, right? You saw we uh, uh, we did all the scripting. Of course, I will spend a lot more time on this if this is a security meetup. But it's not, right? We're doing automation, so let's move on. So now, I'm secured my website, right? But I have one measly T2 micro. It's not going to meet the humongous demand I'm going to get for my, my, the, the awesome shampoo I'm selling at a big discount. So let's scale it. Okay, so here's where I'd like to introduce another cool tower feature. Okay, tower, just like I mentioned before, uh, AWS has CloudFormation templates, F5 has IX, tower has surveys. Okay, I don't know why they call them surveys, but anyway, surveys are a front end, right? They allow you to have a visual uh, thing as simple as this, right? To say, I need this particular input into my playbook. Yeah? So look at this. I mean, even a primary school kid could probably answer this, right? And run this playbook. Hey, I want to scale this to six instances. Oh, but I set a limit, right? I, my auto scale group has a maximum of five, so I don't want to get errors. Let's try scaling to five. Just now, if you were sharp and you saw my big IP config, you only have one node. Yeah? So let's see what happens. I launch this. Of course, this takes a while, uh, you know. EC2 are still VMware machines. They take. I mean, they are not VMware, they are Zen VMs. Yeah, they are VMs, right? VMs don't spin up as fast as containers. Next time when I build this on OpenShift, right? Wow, it's going to be lightning quick. Right, so this one, breathe deeply, take a rest, right? And in about two minutes, then you'll see that everything scales seamlessly. But right? let me take this chance, right? This two minutes to explain something to you that as application owner, you know a few things, right? You know you need to secure your application before you expose it to the outside world. You know you need a certain amount of inf infrastructure to uh, backend nodes, right? To accept uh, a large volume of requests, say over a spike period like Black Friday. Yeah? And that's all you should need to know. You should need to care about all the complexities of F5, all the complexities of AWS for that matter. The cloud formation template abstracts you away from that in AWS. IAPS in F5 abstracts you away from the IAPS complexity. So templates are a big um, focus and uh, something in, uh, in automation. Right? So let's just take a quick look how it's scaled out. Five, five. Okay, those numbers have converged. Okay, they are more or less running. Let's check out whether I can access. Okay, so um, 
I'm getting a reply from uh, 5.10.98. Ah, okay, phew. <laughs> so this one's uh, different. It's 5.10.155. And let's try one more, okay? Okay, 69, right? So in just two clicks, right? And you wait two minutes, basically you have five times the scale. If you have more money, right? I could set it to 10, right? However much you want to pay AWS. But one thing very cool here that I'd like to highlight is how this is all auto discovered by F5, right? It's totally transparent. I didn't have, I, I had no idea what the private IPs would, would be assigned to each of the backend EC2s, right? If you look down here, each of them was just auto discovered. We pulled the metadata into F5 so that you don't have to worry about it. That is service discovery, right? And that's how you make things automated. Okay, so just to wrap things up because I think I've taken a fair amount of time. Um, now, now, probably um, the Black Friday event is over, right? I want to quickly scale down. So now I scale it to <laughs> zero. Oh. Okay. So basically, now I'm just collapsing all my uh, backend infrastructure, so I I don't have to um, yeah I don't have to pay for it yeah. Okay, this is successful, but I'm pretty darn sure EC2 hasn't killed everything yet. Yeah, because when that is done, we will also collapse all the back-end <laughs> nodes. So that the front, and then of course, F5 can do funky stuff, right? It can redirect you to a uh, under maintenance page, yeah, all those uh, stuff. Okay, it hasn't completed, but in a matter of minutes, basically, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you catch a drift, right? That's how it works, right? Automation, you just click, wait a bit, and then it's done. Right? And all these features in Tower, right, that enable you to do stuff like scheduling, right? Down here you can do scheduling. It, so Tower is very strong in this stuff. Auditing, credentials, scheduling, right? It's not a replacement for Jenkins. Jenkins has way better integration with Slack. It can, uh, has a lot more plugins. It can do um, uh, workflows, very elegant workflows that ask you for um, uh, authorization before it moves forward, right? Okay. So, yeah, I hope that was a nice demo. <laughs> and any questions? Did you tear down your F5 instance as well? I can. Do you want to see that? You left it running. Or not? I left it running because... Yeah. yeah. No, I, okay, no good reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just left it running. Right. If you dare me to, I'll tear it down. <laughs> but I have to supply a new license, you see, when I oh. spin it up. I use... I, even for F5, we use eval license. So I got to go and put in a new license. I, I thought it was a bit too troublesome. Okay, any other questions? Hey, feel free. This is a meetup. I know it's kind of, we have a lot of people, but um, no question is too dumb because I just learned this stuff two weeks ago, right? And if you just think of a question later, just come and grab me. Uh, I'll be here until about 10. You can help me pack up the room and I'll answer any question you want, right? Yeah. Yeah, if not, I, and more questions? Or else Nick will take over for um, open shift service brokers. Yeah. Right. Uh, not, not, uh, it's fairly new and very technical. So I also do not want to dive down too deep. Uh, but